Uh, thank you for coming. My name is Brian Potter. This is my very good friend and associate, Brad Parler. And today we are going to talk to you about what it takes to be a totally awesome video rock star. Now, uh, there's a, well, let, let me introduce myself a little bit. Um, I'm the video content specialist at Shipple, and that means that I produce, direct, write, edit, edit, and deliver, and encode all of our video production for our clients and our internal communication with our company. Um, I was uh, the in-house media director at Lakewood Church. I did all the ministry videos. I did about 50 videos a year for five years. I have over 10 years of experience doing video production full-time. Um, I've worked on films and music videos. I have to read about myself. What else did I do? Um, I'm also the founder of the Houston Flash Mob, and I'm an eternal optimist. So that's the most important thing about me. Oh, I got it. I got it. Wait, where are you? Oh, that's me. Okay, so what's going to happen is um, uh, Brad will be Silent Bob over there for a few minutes. Uh, <laughs> we're going to sort of break this up into two pieces. Uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about, um, well, first of all, how many people are utilizing video production currently for what they do? Okay, cool. Um, how long, uh, let's say over a year you've been doing that for your organization? Good, okay, good. Less than a year? Okay. Yeah, <laughs> logic didn't work there, did it? Um, so that's great. Are you guys doing it? Uh, this is how many are nonprofits? Good. Okay, for profit. Everybody else? Yeah, cool. Okay, uh, how many putting their videos on the web? Of course, very good. All right. So what I'm going to talk to you today about is I'm going to talk to you about why video matters. I'm going to talk to you about the basics of storytelling for your video production. Um, what I, did I, I had, I thought I had that. Did I delete that slide? Oh cool, I deleted a slide. No, that's later. Um, I'm going to talk to you about, uh, uh, the, the, the sort of why you should do it. Brad is going to talk to you <laughs> about the how. Brad is a guy who brought all this big sexy equipment over here. He works at a place called Tapeworks Texas. Um, and, uh, he's put together this nice handout for you. Anything you need after this? session for your organization for video production to purchase, this is your guy. He will take care of you. I buy everything from him. You can trust him. He's a good guy. And you will not have to get a timeshare after this or anything like that. We're just giving you information. So um, that's what we're going to talk about. So let's start off with why does, uh, why should even bother? Now this is an enormous amount of statistics. I'm not going to read everything on, on both these slides, but I want to give you an idea of what's happening. And, and Brad and I, our belief is that video is the future of the web. Video will be a primary player with what's going to be going on with content that's on the web. It's very important. It's interactive. Uh, you can tell a story so effectively with video production. Um, it's becoming easier and easier now. I mean, YouTube has a video editing tool built into its website. You can take clips you've uploaded and you can edit them. It's got an image stabilization feature in YouTube. I used it for my mom's video of her recording her dog, Fred. She puts these little pieces of um, food under, um, you guys know cookie sheets? She puts golf balls in the holes and she puts the food under one of the golf balls and he hunts around for it and finds it. It's like a little game for him. Well, it's shaky. So I hit a button on YouTube and it stabilized her footage. This, is, this was back in the day, thousands of dollars for this software to accomplish this kind of stuff. So it's becoming easier now. Um, most people, who has, who has a video camera that records HD video in the room? Okay, almost half of people have a camera. What's up? Oh, yeah, okay. Um, I'll bring it down. Um, HD high definition video. My iPhone shoots high definition video. 720p, 1080p, things like that. The, you know, big channels doing 1080. <clears throat> That's HD video. Little cameras have 128 gigabyte hard drives now. You can record. 30 hours of HD video content for under $1,000. I mean, this is where we're at. So I believe it's where it's going. Here's some statistics. Statistics, forget the S. Uh, more than 13 million hours of video were uploaded during 2010, and 48 hours of video were uploaded every minute, resulting in eight years of content uploaded every day. Over 3 billion videos are viewed a day. Users upload equivalent of 240,000 full-length feature films every week. More videos uploaded to YouTube in one month than three major U.S. networks create in 60 years. The, now, you can go to YouTube.com 
And you can type in YouTube statistics, pull up, the, I, I just stole this from their website. 70% of YouTube traffic comes from outside the United States. YouTube is localized in 25 countries across 43 languages. YouTube's demographic is broad, 18 to 54 years old. There was a guy called um, Geriatric something um, on YouTube. He was a British man. He was uh, about 85 years old. He created a YouTube channel, and he just re records himself talking about all these life experiences. Became hugely successful. He says, uh, I like to talk today about why it's important. And people love him. He was so sweet. Um, YouTube reached over 700 billion playbacks in 2010. Now here's an interesting fact, making money with video production, monetization, this is just YouTube statistics because YouTube, Google, Facebook, you know, if, you, if you're looking for anything, you go to Google, what do you say, oh, let me see music videos, sure, let me pull it up on YouTube. You don't go to MTV.com, you don't go to, uh, if you're looking for a clip from your favorite, um, you know, fashion network thing, you go to YouTube and you look for the YouTube channel, right? You don't usually go to like uh, TLC.com to find the extreme home makeover clips. In fact, many times the official websites don't have the best clips of their television shows. YouTube has the clip that goes viral from Extreme Home Makeover or whatever, and people share that, and then they want to take it down, but it stays up for a while at least. YouTube is monetizing over 3 billion video views per week globally. 98 of Ad Age's top 100 advertisers have run campaigns on YouTube and the Google Display Network. The number of advertisers using Google, uh, displaying ads on YouTube increased tenfold in the last year. We are experiencing an exponential growth in video content on the web. People are starting to make serious money, and I'll show you why. This is, I'm not going to read, this is <laughs> wall of text, yay. Uh, 17 million people have connected YouTube account to any other social service, Facebook and Twitter. This is just social information. Uh, 12 million people are connected and auto-sharing at least to one social network. That means that people can get to your account every time you upload a video, it automatically posts on their Facebook wall. Very cool technology. 150 years of YouTube video are watched every day on Facebook. These are just more enormous statistics. Uh, and I want to move on to the, um, well, there's a thing in monetization. And I don't have it. Uh, the other part for monetization is that there are YouTube partner programs. And um, the, uh, <laughs> the, we need one of these, by the way, Ed. Uh, the YouTube partner programs, some YouTube partners are making over six figures for their income with their YouTube partner program. My wife, for example, she watches, any ladies um, watch the, the makeup tutorials on YouTube? Don't be afraid. Raise your hand. Okay, almost, yeah, okay. Uh, they, uh, these makeup uh, tutorials, they're getting stuff shipped to them from Mac, from, uh, so if, uh, uh, these large companies are saying, here's $5,000 worth of makeup and hair products. We want you to talk about it. They're getting uh, deals on television. They're, they're getting money off their website. They're getting views. For the views they get paid, they place ads because they have thousands of subscribers. People are making serious money on YouTube uh, by doing, and they're sitting at home with their laptop and, their, and their, their webcam. First you do this with the thing and it's just ah, quiet. Okay, so what's happening now? So they're, I mean, it's not like, you know, this, which this is important, you know, for if you're doing large scale stuff, but they've got a little $600 camera and a tripod and a nice window. And they've got an interesting thing that people are, are watching. So this is important. So uh, what we won't be talking about, we're not gonna talk about uh, three point lighting uh, rule of thirds. Uh, we're not going to talk about um, wide, medium, close-up shots. We're not going to talk about once you're on the field and shooting. We have Google people. Like, I had to shoot and do video editing all day long to learn what I learned, but the fact of the matter is that you can go to Google and type in three-point lighting. Shot composition. How do I offload my footage? What are my settings for encoding for YouTube? It's your friend, so we're not going to cover that because there's a whole world out there. Um, and so you can find it on Google. The thing I want to tell you today is that you can do it. A lot of people are really intimidated by doing video production. Uh, they think uh, it's going to take so much time, and they're right. They think it's really hard, and they're right. And they think, I can't start, and that's where they're wrong. The only way that you're going to get really good, and you're going to even begin, is just to start shooting and editing. People always ask me, I want to get into video production. I love what you do. I love the kind of work. It's so glamorous and all that stuff. And I always say, Okay, here's what you want to do if you're going to start doing video production. <clears throat> go out and shoot something and screw up and learn from that. 
and then work on another project, screw up worse and learn a bigger lesson on that, and then shoot something else and do a good job and be happy about that. Then work on a project you don't care about and the client doesn't appreciate it, give it to them, work on the next one, screw up on that. That's what happens with video production. You shoot and edit and learn and shoot and edit and learn. And that's the best way in my opinion to learn. Um, go out and do it. Just don't make any excuses. Don't expect Steven Spielberg. You know, nobody's Steven Spielberg. He's Steven Spielberg. You're you. You have your own story to tell. It's a good story. Start shooting it and getting it out there, okay? So just do it. Yeah, if you suck, you'll get better, but it won't happen until you start. So suck and get better, okay? This is the most important part of any video production you'll ever do. Is it a blog? Are you telling, are you doing raising money for cancer? Do you have a new uh, class that you like to tell people about? Do you have a new division you're opening up in your company? The most important of any element of doing video production is you have to tell a story. You have to have a beginning, a middle, and end. That's the first thing I always think about. People can come to us and they'll say like, um, we've been talking to um, a client recently who's have a very difficult struggle. They've got an organization that was in the news for some very bad stuff that happened there and they want to tell the story about their people now. They've revamped everything. And so I think, okay, there's a story here to tell. So you have to find out when you're thinking about what do you want to do, what's my beginning, my middle, and my end? What's the first thing I want to open with? You know, we started this organization in 1997 and we only had 10 people and we've grown to over 400 people beginning. Middle. Now that we've grown, we've decided that we'd like to expand our solution to talk about da 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 da. We need your help. Here's the end. We need to find out what we can do from you to volunteer, to raise funds, to tell your friends about what we're doing here at XYZ Company. Everything has a beginning, middle, end. Hey, we're here raising a fundraiser for our cancer benefit. This is Bob Anderson. Hey, Bob. So tell us what we're doing today. Ba da 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 da. Why are you here? Ba da 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 da. What can people do to help? Ba da 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 da. Beginning, middle, and end. Cool? So, a lot of people don't want to hear you talking about you. They don't want to hear, hi, welcome to Shipple. here's why we're awesome, 400 plus websites, Children's Museum. They want to hear the Children's Museum going, we're so glad we have our website with Shipple because they provide great customer service, da 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 If you have a, and they don't want to hear, we are so glad that we are here with Shipple because Shipple, what was it? Shipple is a great company. They don't want it to feel scripted. People know it's <laughs> fake. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know when you pull, you know when you pull up the, the advertisements for, you know, da da da. Hey, mom, I'm home. You know, or um, the people who uh, are for like uh, the weightlifting thing, they're like this, you know, perfectly shaped. They got this little thing going like this, and that makes them in shape, right? <laughs> they're like, I know that it's, you know, the best workout thing I've ever had. They're a paid actor. You know this, but you buy it anyway. But uh, they like real testimony, real people. You know, and it's a challenge to get people to get on camera and talk about you and edit something that comes together pretty nicely. But have other people talk about you. Clients, raving fans. You can have people make their own videos. Remember I said how many people have a video camera? Everybody has a video camera. You have a cell phone, you have a video camera now. You know? So have other people make videos. Tell us why you adopted your pet. People love kittens rule the internet, people. You want to get viral videos? Get kittens and puppies. They're the, sort of the, the retarded cousin of the internet videos, the dogs, the cats really have it. But uh, people can make their own video. Why did you adopt your pet? Why did you run the 500 mile marathon to whatever? Why did you come to our event? What did you like about our music festival? Share our videos, share this, share that. It's so easy to do now. So have other people talk about you. Plan. This is something people don't take into consideration. I say go and do it, that's good. Do it for a bit and then start thinking about a little more long term stuff. Let me know when I'm getting about 20 minutes, cool? I want to give you your time. Oh, six? Wow, okay. Um, am I going too fast, by the way? Cool. Um, this is a little secret that I like to share with people. When I share, usually about six light bulbs go on. If you have a room that has a nice white background, and you've got a little bit of lighting and some audio gear or whatever, and let's say you're a company that, um, let's say you're a web marketing company and you've got a piece of software <clears throat> tendency. And so what you want to do is you want to talk about, for the next six months, you know that you want to do a video post a week talking about the features of tendency, okay? You can walk into that room, and if you're planned, you can shoot six months worth of videos in an afternoon. You get your experts lined up, you get your programming guy, you get your design guy, you get your ever guy. And you do, hi, my name is Brian. Today we're going to talk about how you can use video with tendency. Here's what you need to know. Ba -da 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 -da. Thank you, Brian. Boom, he's gone. You go back to your editing suite, take a couple days. You do your intro, outro, all that stuff. And within about a week, you've created six months worth of video content. That's powerful. 
So if you plan out and you think, can I shoot this and can I get anything else out of this? We've got our CEO in town, you're a multinational corporation. Sit him down, have him talk about what's going on in the company. Have him talk about why his employees are great. Have him talk about a number of different things that you can do little highlights. You know, get one of your HR people to talk about uh, employees that are doing good in your community. Gather about six of them together and then have them tell their story individually and make a little thing highlighting the videos of your company, uh, the employees of your company talking about why they're making a difference in the neighborhood. Shoot that in an afternoon, take a couple days to edit it, and you've got four months worth of video content. So that's what I mean when I say plan. Research. Is there somebody out there who's doing what you do currently in the marketplace? Uh, United Way or something like that, or, or uh, let's say you're a music festival. What are they doing for their video? You don't have to recreate the wheel. This is something that I fought against for so long, because as a creative, many of you people, how many people have a creative role in your company? That's what I figured. Okay, as a creative, a lot of times you think, okay, you know, what Picasso said, a good artist, what is a good artist, borrow great artist steal, or something like that. I'm probably butchering this. But the point is that you don't have to recreate the wheel. Find out who's doing what's, you know, who's getting a lot of hits out there. What is it that they're doing? Why is it so interesting? And borrow from, everything's borrowed. Nothing is new under the sun. You're not, you're not the, you know, you're not, there's no Da Vinci's, you know, anymore, really. So. Find out who's doing what's you know, good out there and grab it and utilize it and borrow it. So don't recreate it from the beginning. It's gonna take so much more headache. And then once you get something going, come up with something creative. But don't make the mistake I made and think you have to do it all yourself. So at this time, I wanna answer questions first. Does anybody have any questions about what we discussed with that stuff? Super. Yeah, yeah what's up? Can you speak up a little bit? Oh, can you hear me now? Yeah, I'm thinking of the other people. Um, I've shot several videos, and we've seen a lot of our videos on YouTube. My question is this. Um, how, do you know how they measure that or the views? I know sometimes uh, I'll put like a link or an embedded code and put it onto like a blog or put it onto like another client's blog. But for some reason, I look at the views, I see a lot of people <coughs> um, sending it out to different, you know, to their friends and things like that, but then the numbers are still low. How do they count the number of views? How long is a video? Okay, that might be part of it. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Brad. Uh, views are counted when the video is completely played through. Videos are usually counted by complete playthroughs. I forgot to mention this, okay. I thought I was gonna speak faster, so I cut out a bunch of my title slides. I'm gonna go on a little bit. How much time do I have for that? Two minutes? I'll make one point, okay. There's another thing. Know your target audience and think about the length of your video. So two and a half to three minutes is a bit long for video content. What kind of content are you creating? Like a little on the, on the street kind of a thing? Okay, my rule of thumb is if it's over a minute and a half, think about what you're putting up there. One second, Glenn, I see you. Um, I don't wanna answer your question first and I'll get right to you. Uh, the, qu the answer is that video count is usually calculated by complete playthroughs. So if they don't play it all the way through, sometimes it won't count as a complete play. Interesting thing about YouTube is you can pull up statistics and see how often it's been embedded. They'll say as seen on, and they'll list like pages and stuff like that. So they'll show you where people are coming from, but sometimes complete playthroughs are based on, like Rebecca Black is a music video. Remember Friday, right? It got hundreds of millions of views because people watched the whole thing through with their friends. So that's a part of it is playback. Yep, did that answer your question? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I got it. I read a book about public speaking before I came up here. Um, <laughs> Idiot's Guide, does it show? Uh, so the question was, if I don't know, uh, if I'm not using any editing software currently, which editing software should I use if I'm new to it? The answer is there's a number of different things. Every, how many people have a Mac? You have iMovie probably. Check out iMovie, I hate iMovie, but that's because I'm used to dealing with a robust feature set, okay? iMovie can import, edit your video, and export very easily. It has presets for YouTube and stuff like that. iMovie's great. Window Movie Maker on Microsoft or Windows. Um, Adobe Premiere Elements is a mid-range. 
I'm a Premiere guy. And here's another thing. People ask, what's better, Final Cut, Premiere, or Avid? It doesn't matter. If you go see an Avatar, if you go see Avatar or, you know, The Good, Bad, and the Ugly, you don't sit back and go, oh, I love that. It must have been worked on in Premiere. You think that was a good movie because you just don't know. All of them have their feature sets. You need to find out what their feature sets are and how they apply to your workflow. I use Premiere because I use Photoshop, After Effects, Encore, Sound Booth. They all talk to each other. I do something in After Effects. I bring it into Premiere. I want to change the blue red, uh, the ball red instead of blue. I make a change. I go back to Premiere, and it's updated without rendering. I make a change in Photoshop. The text is changed in Premiere. I export to Encore. Change in Premiere is reflected in Encore. They all talk to each other. I don't do that in Avid because I deal with all those things, and Avid's like the redheaded stepchild in my family there. So I can't really you know, play around with them. So the answer to your question is check out iMovie, Windows Movie Maker, Adobe Premiere Elements. Then there's Final Cut X. Do they do Ex Express anymore? No. no. Yeah, Final Cut Pro X. Yeah, hey, um, yeah Sony Vegas is a good one. Um, so with computers nowadays, an iMac is a video editing workstation. Those things are so powerful. So check out those, uh, those guys. iMovie is great for a lot of stuff. And then you can upgrade to you know, Premiere Suite. And it's great if you have graphic designers because it comes with Photoshop and Illustrator and all this other stuff. So you don't just buy the one, you buy a bunch. So yeah, does that answer your question? Okay, good. Okay, that's the stuff I wanted to cover for that. And now I'd like to introduce my good friend Brad Parler, who's going to talk to you about a lot more technical awesome stuff. Here you go. Yes, so I'm Brad, and I'm also commonly confused by Kevin Smith. It's really embarrassing. They ask me to sign something. I put my name, and they're really confused. So I have a over 10 years in broadcasting um, for television, have a history in radio, and my career started in live theater. I really wanted to know how to light the face better, so I got into photography. That realized that, oh, those pictures can move, so I got into video and film. And I wanted a place to put it, so I got into the web. I work at Tapeworks Texas. I sell the stuff that I'm going to talk about. I know that you guys didn't come here to hear, hear a sales pitch, so I'm not going to be talking about any specific products or any specific price points. I'm just going to be talking about generalities. If you guys want to talk about what you need to buy, come see me, please. I work on commission, <laughs> and I have four kids. So I'm going to be uh, Captain Obvious and just going to go through the five things that you absolutely must have for awesome video. And the first thing that you need is a video camera. It's a good place to start. Um, how many, can you guys just like hold up your iPhones? I'm like sure that almost 80% of you guys have one. And okay, Android, true geeks, come on. All right, thank you, there's at least one, awesome. I can't afford an iPhone, <laughs> again, four kids. Um, <laughs> so you need, a, you need a video camera and one of the things that I get asked a lot is, well, what video camera should I get? Or what's the right video camera? The right video camera is the camera that's in your hand. If you have budget, super. It's awesome. Use your budget. If you don't have budget, you can get something for as little as 80 bucks that will shoot high definition video, will also double as a webcam, and you're started. Now, the first video camera that I used going back 10 years ago, cost, well, the body alone cost $28,000. The lens was another 20000 Now, and that was back in analog days, on shooting on Betacam SP on tape. You can still buy a $50,000 video camera. It doesn't mean that you have to. So, again, it goes back to what do you... What's in your hand? What's right now? What kind of video do you need to shoot? The, are you a news guy? Are you trying to you know, go out and shoot news? Or do you want to make it more you know, cinematic? There are different applications for that kind of thing. But you, you have to start by shooting video. The other thing that you need is solid audio. One of the things that it just absolutely lacks is, you know, Brian gives a really good illustration on this. Can you grab that? Yeah, I always say that if you have a great video but no audio, you have surveillance footage. If yeah. you have excellent audio but no video, you have a CD. The yeah. two are mutu not mutually exclusive. They need to work in conjunction. Thank you on that. I always get the 
two backwards. So you, you need great audio. And because you don't want to shoot surveillance because, you know, it's funny on YouTube, I guess, when the guy smashes through the stuff and, you know, falls down the dumbest criminals videos. I just really like those. But, um, you know, one great thing, you guys may have heard of this guy. Sound and music are over 50% of the entertainment. You know, guys who understand that you can extract emotion by the soundtrack. It's not just about what's, what sound is there, but how are you extracting emotion on doing that? The other thing that you need, you need, must have, please consider getting a tripod. A tripod is one of the, the most overlooked pieces of equipment that, hey, you know, I, I spent all this money on the, the video camera. I'm gonna get this great camera. It's gonna make me a wonderful shooter and I'm not gonna spend $500 on a tripod. You know, one of the things that, when, with one of the guys that I really respect, you may not know who this is, but Stu Mashowitz has a really, really great quote. Tripods are like pants. We use them because we have self-respect. Yeah. <laughs> so Stu Mashowitz, if you guys have no clue of who he is, he's an amazing director of photography started this, well, had a really big part in starting a little company called ILM. He was one of the founders of ILM. Industrial he, Light and Magic. Industrial Light and Magic. Sorry, not industry folks. Um, he also started a division inside of ILM, or Industrial Light and Magic, that is called the Orphanage. The Orphanage uses completely off-of-the-shelf hardware. Now, ILM, when they need a new you know, server cluster because they're going to do some math that represents the wave in CG that comes in, they code all of that stuff. They don't use off-the-shelf. You know, they're, they're not using Final Cut. They're not using. They're, they have engineers that are coding and they're making their own software because they have the budget for that. They're doing blockbuster movies. Stu created this, this uh, division that uses off the shelf. They use Max, they use Final Cut, they use Premiere, you know, really cool stuff. So it proves that you can do amazing things. He did the Italian job. He did the post-production on the Italian job on off the shelf stuff. Next thing that you need to know and you need to have is a light. You need, you know, let me also say that it's good to have lighting, but again, if you have an amazing window that you're shooting in front of, use available light and use a, a reflector. No, just real quick, Brad. Yeah. Uh, the word photography, does anybody know what the word, the Latin or the Greek or the, the root for photography means? It means light writing. Mm. Photo, photography, graphy. It means light writing. If you don't have light, you can have, you can have a, a not very expensive camera, but if you give it, I always say you can, if you give the camera the right light, it usually gets pretty decent results. So just an interesting little guy there. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for that. Now, the... So in lighting, using available or using super high-end LED. Now this is one of the things that I love is, you know, Ed talks about the, you know, the democratization and through technology that things get less expensive, it becomes more attainable. This is what I would consider the Rolls Royce of LED lighting. This one fixture is $2,000. They're the same fixture that is in the, the White House press room. They're amazing, but they're freaking expensive. There's a company that you know, has come out that you're doing the same thing for way less. So LED technology is amazing. Sorry, thank you. Sorry. Pointed at your wife. <laughs> um, so lighting, you have to have lighting. And we're gonna be doing a workshop. If you have no idea on how to light things or why to light things, please come and take a look at what we have. We have the RE kits. Yeah, we'll have the RE kit and cameras and a, this guy and a bunch of gear at the thing across the way. Have one of those, right? You yeah, have, you, we'll you have, have a, RE soft boxes and yeah. all kinds of cool fixtures. Cool. Thanks to Larry Westfall with Limelight Media, by the way, who's in the back, who when we're done here, you can ask some questions too. He's providing all the gear for that. Absolutely. And the next thing that that you need is you need to edit. And 
editing is so important. When, when we're talking about creating a story, some people are just one take masters and they do video blogs, they turn it on, they just hit the zen mode and it's like amazing. I am not that guy. I tried doing a video blog for like six weeks and just like, I would get in this retake loop you know, where I'm like, oh, let me just start that one more time. Oh, no, that, I, I screwed that up. Let me just don't like what, like what Brian said, when, it, when you start, it's going to suck. It's just one of those things. So editing is, a, is one of the things that allows you to create separate takes, that beginning, middle, and end, assembling all of that together and you know, there are different ways of doing it depending on your platform, depending on, yep. Can you tell them uh, how much you can get a, a, a decent workstation for and how inexpensive that can be for software and hardware and everything? Yeah, a uh, decent uh, PC, you can start around, you know, honestly, it, Mac is a lot, I mean, getting an iMac, starting off with iMovie is probably the most low barrier of entry. That's what, like $1,700? 1700 bucks, 1800 bucks. It and comes like with a, the software that you're gonna use. Like a $200 external hard drive? Yeah. Yeah, like a terabyte hard drive for 200 bucks and 1700 bucks for less than $2,000, more or less, not including software. You can have a workstation last you for a while and you can do some pretty decent work yeah. on it. So and it's not $10,000 like it used to be. You can yeah. do it at home. Oh. People are making movies at home all the time. Okay, so again, going back to the same facility where I started, the editing workstation that I was doing the television work on cost $60,000. That was just, it was discrete edit. It was a very, very high-end system. Then they upgraded to Smoke. The upgrade was $40,000. You know, so it's just one of those things that it is expensive. That software still exists, by the way. It's still ungodly expensive. <laughs> um, but it doesn't have to be. So Vegas will run on almost any PC. It treats video as a database, so it runs really efficiently. And you can get a, a low-end copy of that for like 50 bucks. And you can get that directly from Sony. When we're lo looking at editing, I want you to, to realize that when you shoot something, it doesn't mean that you have to show it. Editing defined, I, I like to define editing as the juxtaposition of time and events. You, when you shoot something it, at night, even if it's indoors, you don't have to make it in your story that it's at night. You are the director. You have that control. Because you shot it doesn't mean you have to show it. How many people unashamedly will say that for a while they used to think, that for, I, I did for a while, that we knew when you go see a movie, how many people, people thought for a long time that they shot that in order? Like when you go see a film, yeah. right? They shoot over a period of months all over the country, completely out of order. I think one of the only films that was shot, well, this could be wrong. I know one film that was shot completely in order was Deliverance, mm -hmm. and that's like a super rarity kind of a thing. So that's just something kind of weird to think about. They'll shoot like, you know, the beginning, then the very end, and then something else, and then an entire scene uh, over a period of, oh, they'll shoot an entire dialogue scene over a period of like three days. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, the, how many saw the Bourne movies? You know the Bourne movie where he's in the hotel in Rio and they're doing that big fight scene where he punches him with a book and he hits his head and the, they shot that in like a week. They took like a week to shoot that three minute fight scene. So just something to keep in the back of your head. Doesn't happen all in order and all that stuff. Uh, what, what time do we start? What time does this end? I don't even know. I don't know what time. I'm not, I'm waiting. Huh? Oh, thanks. I'm looking, I'm waiting. Oh good, yeah, okay. okay. So Brian had mentioned that the future of the web is video. I firmly am persuaded that the future of web video is live. It's, you know, Twitter brought us instant access to folks. It's immediate, it's, it's there. Live video from cell phones is available. How many of you guys remember when the plane went down into the Hudson? Anybody? Yeah. So the first photo that went through the AP wire was from what? Was it from a national photographer? No, it was from a smartphone. On an, it was an, it was an iPhone, and it hit Twitter first, and then AP picked up from that. Can you imagine what would have happened if they had a four, an iPhone four, and it would have been video? I remember when Brian actually posted, he did an insert for CNN. Oh yeah, go ahead and talk about that. You guys, uh, the fire at George Bush Park. Uh, that happened what? Month? 
a couple weeks ago. Yeah, couple Shipple weeks. overlooks um, the opposite side of I-10 facing south. And so just to the uh, west of us, remember when I was 16? Remember when you were 16 and people would tell you, hey, turn west on south and west Main or whatever? I had no idea. Now I'm like, west, south, I totally get it. Um, <laughs> There was a huge thing of fire, so I grabbed my my, and this was during you know during our drought. So any little smoke, I mean, we you know people are going crazy up north, and it's it's terrible. So I'm thinking, okay, this is bad, and then I go back over there, and it's really bad. So I grabbed my my iPhone, and I recorded a video saying, "This is Brian Potter," because Ed encouraged all of us at Chipple to get a CNN iReport account. Uh, if you don't have one, you should check it out. You can do stories, post to CNN. Once you become verified, it goes up up on uh, the CNN. I heard port page. So I posted a video, put it on CNN. I got a call from a producer at CNN to verify. And uh, they said yes, and then they put it up, reporting that there was a big fire in George Bush Park. And then KHOU picked it up. Right. And then all the other local news guys did. So that was, it took place in a period of 30 minutes, maybe? Yeah, it was, it was verified within 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. And it was on KHOU within the hour. Well, they're doing it for the Occupy Wall Street thing, right. too, right now. They're doing live streaming video. There's people who put backpacks on with power supplies laptops and it's tethered and they walk around doing live streaming video on Justin.tv or Ustream and stuff like that. Yeah, there, um, there are a number of manufacturers that are making these backpacks that we can take this Sony camera and almost basically the same setup as that. The TriCaster actually has a, a multi-camera backpack version of it. It's the TriCaster 300. And, you know, it's, you know, so, yes, as far as for live, that is why I brought the big monolith that's humming over here, that video server. So live production, being able to take multiple cameras. Anybody here from agencies who, yes, two? Super. Um, I would encourage you, look at the possibility of creating what is called an, as an insert studio inside of your agency so that you can create have your clients come in, do live messages to their followers from your studio and your, or Google, insert studio and figure out how, pe how much people are, t are paying to go to a place to do an insert to CNN. It's just unbelievable. Right. Yeah. So, uh, there, okay, so the question was, is there a software to take two cameras in and to switch between them? That is the job of that guy, is it's a hardware solution. Now, for the, for, for just for two cameras, do you want to be able to do that for live production or for editing? For editing, there is a plug-in for Premiere, for Vegas, for almost everyone that I know, that's, it's a multi-cam, uh, switch. So as long as the video is synced, you can put it on the timeline, say, I want to do camera one, camera two, just, just go back and forth between the two, and it will do all the edits for you. Oh, yeah, Premiere has a really good um, multi-cam yeah. option built in uh, that you sync the cameras, put them in a sequence, bring that sequence in, say this is multi-cam, brings up a window, and you hit one and two on your keyboard as it plays back. And, and it, it just, just does the edits. Does, it. does all of the cutting, and then what's going to be on the... On the and you can tweak it later and all that stuff. I use it all the time for weddings. Yeah, it's great. Now, and then I want to kill myself. <laughs> Weddings most, are tough, man. <laughs> as most wedding videos do. So the job of the, the device in the corner is it takes multiple cameras in at the same time and will also put out a live video feed to the projector, multiple projectors, and to the internet live as it's happening. Mm -hmm. We're also able to, and I'm going to show this off kind of in our hands-on, we're able to do live green screen so when you see like special effects or the behind the scenes of stuff or the weather guy who's standing in front of a huge green screen, we have the capability of pulling a green screen, what's called pulling a key, where you're removing them from the, the footage and you can put them wherever. You can, and the software has built in live sets that you can be anywhere. In the coming weeks, I'm gonna be having one of these big guys in my, in my office and we'll be doing a, a live, you know, a live one hour show from my office every week. Which and is cool because imagine you've got the CNN newsroom set behind you that's a $10 million facility mm -hmm. and instead it's actually just a green piece of material. Yeah, and that's why I included on the handout what is a green screen cost. There's a five by seven on that handout. It's affordable. So, 
last thing I wanted to, to talk about is the streaming media market right now is on course to triple its revenue to over 12 billion by 2014. That's huge. I'm sorry. That's just that that kind of stuff makes me like I want to be a part of that. You know. Anybody else with me? Yeah. <laughs> I, w I want my share of that, and I believe that. You know, <laughs> is it wrong? I mean, to <laughs> come on. <laughs> That's why exactly. All right. So. Four kids. Four kids. Four kids. <laughs> four kids. <laughs> Buy some sorry. cameras. What? No. Oh man. All right. Um. So the, there, there's money there. There's ad revenue. If you have unbelievable content, people want to watch it, and people want to attach their brand with your amazing content. And that means dollars in your pocket as the content originator or as an agency putting that in front of people. Any questions on the five things and kind of my bonus on, on live video? Not everybody wants. It's going to freak me out. Just to, just to tag on to what Brad said there at the very end. Remember I made the example earlier about um, the makeup videos? Example of, uh, I refuse to say niche, uh, niche market. Uh, those people, like I said, are not, how many videos, they get 20, 30,000 hits, some of them? Yeah. And some of those are really gorgeous looking things, but they're experts. Let me get that. The thing is that they're experts. I always have something in my hands. They're experts at what they do. They have a niche that they found, and they're just putting it out there. Like I said, they're starting it and doing These are stay-at-home moms and stuff like that. So that's, that's a key to getting in on this. Um, don't worry about the slide. Getting in on, on that big ad revenue and people getting your hits and you know things like that. Uh, everybody here has a passion. A big theme for ShibbleCon, you guys probably picked up, is passion, right? Doing what you're passionate about. You have a passion. It's probably unique to almost everybody in here. Like, who else is a fire-breathing hula hoop dancer? Not me. So, but there are other people out there. Thank God, otherwise, you know, I'd feel like, am I alone? Find your passion, find your niche, start doing some video content about it, and you'll be surprised at what happens. You'll be surprised. Because everybody has something they're an expert at, you know? I had a boss who once said that, become an expert in something, you'll never be without a job. I think it's true. And the great thing about the video and the internet now is that everybody can hear, hear about your expertise. There's a guy on YouTube um, who I, I'm pretty sure lives in his mother's basement, but uh, it's, uh, he does this show for geeks. Uh, Locker Gnome, I think, is his name. Uh, that's not an oh. insult if he ever sees this. It's a good show. And he no, had, Chris Perillo? Yeah. 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 Oh, no, he's, he's, he's making, man. Yeah, he's making tons of money. But he started out, I remember seeing him early on, and... Um, He's just like got these computers and he was like, today I'm going to build a Hackintosh. Today I'm mm. going to show you what's the difference between an iPhone and something. I just got the new, let's unveil it. It was just interesting techie kind of stuff. They're like, you know, these were five or seven minute videos and they're getting hundreds of thousands of hits because they're super interesting. He found his niche, he became an expert and he put it out there and he was passionate about it. Those are some of the key things to really being successful with your video production. Okay? Uh, we are going to probably tear down some stuff I um, uh, hope you guys can join us across the way in the uh, thing. But I really would like to answer any questions. Don't think anything is, uh, you know, well, they probably know this or this is silly. Hit me up, Glenn. Uh, the question is, what are some good sites out there that help you market your video content? Um, my advice first would be get on YouTube no matter what. I don't care if you don't think it's for YouTube. It's the number one video site in the world. Get on YouTube. There are limitations. You have to know your limitations. One, YouTube has a time limit, 15 minutes, I think, now. 20? Is it, it always changes, but it's going up, so that's good. Do you, have you had a YouTube account for a long time? Okay. Legacy accounts or whatever. Uh, but the thing is, let's say it's 20 to say it this or that. What if you have a 45 minute video? You want to look at a site called Vimeo, V-I-M-E-O. It allows you to upload regardless of length. It has to do with file size. Yeah. So Vimeo is where you go if you have long videos. YouTube is where you go if you want to reach the mass market. 
Uh, they answer your question about where to go to market. There's a website called Tube Mogul. Yeah, Tube Mogul. Tube Mogul uh, lets you connect to a number of sites. You upload your video to Tube Mogul, fill in a bunch of content, and it puts it on all these sites for you at once. Super cool. It even does analytical information. Yes, ma'am. Tube, T U B E M O G U L. Yes? I think it's uh, free, and uh, there probably is a paid. Yeah, free and paid. Same with Vimeo. Vimeo has a free version. I see your hand. I'll get right to you. Uh, Vimeo has a free version. The pro version is totally worth it. It allows you to upload HD video and encode quickly. It's $50 a year. It's 99 now. Thank you for coming. I, no, no, I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, no, it's, uh, but it's whatever it is, it's worth it. Okay, what? Is that less than $10 a month? Okay. It was $50. Wasn't it $50? It was 50. Well, they got to make money. Uh, it allows you to upload uh, up to four gigs a day or something like that. It expands a bunch of things. Let you pass for protect and do things like I want only want these sites to be able to embed my video. Great privacy settings. Very small market share. Very niche. Um, I'm not going to say it. Uh, mostly professionals. Other people doing really awesome video work. YouTube. Beware of YouTube. Also, you have to have a thick skin, guys. If you're going to be on YouTube, man. Either disable comments or deal with it. I'm serious. Like it's, I call it the greater internet dickwad theory. I'm sorry, but you take a normal person plus internet plus anonymity, they are not the same person that you meet when you go to church with them on Sunday. <laughs> I'm just saying this is what happens. So you will have people, you have a great video of your grandma, like, oh, I love you. They're like, they're old. You should kill her. They will say these things. Uh, and it's even worse for an organization. So the great thing about that, there's been other people talk about this, leverage a community and they will beat them down for you. Uh, cool thing about YouTube also is posting video responses. Very important kind of a thing. You have a video that's very popular, they may not accept it, but respond. It's the whole thing that applies to social media. Interact, respond, connect. Same thing with video production. Talk about other people 80% of the time and yourself 20% of the time. Everybody likes to hear that, you know? Um, now with video production, it can be a little different because it's very targeted with your messaging, but um, you know, you want to do video responses, just be aware of commenting. You can disable it, but it cuts down on your shareability in conversations. A lot of conversations increase. Did you want to say something? Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. What? Go ahead. Hit me. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Um, the question was, uh, can you use After Effects without having a lot of knowledge of 3D software and all the cool plugins? Good news is that plugins are fairly inexpensive, but to answer your question, you don't, uh, After Effects is a crappy 3D interface anyway. Yeah. Like After Effects 3D is fake. It's not really three-dimensional anything. Um, you need, the, if you want to, the great thing about After Effects, I always say, if you can imagine, you can do it. So uh, the answer is yes, you don't need to have any experience. Plus, Linda, Please get a lynda.com account. Just do it. Just do it. Just do it. Just do it. They have come, Linda, L Y N D A.com. They have a, a premiere tutorials. They have After Effects tutorials. If you want to get really good at After Effects, become a great artist or connect with a great artist. It's, it's more honestly, After Effects is very, there's, a, there's two ends. There's a very technical side of things, and then there's the artistic side of things. Okay? Um, what's that? Yeah, videocopilot.net. Oh my gosh, Andrew Kramer. Please buy all of his stuff. He's such a great guy. He has tutorials taking you from how to use After Effects all the way. We're going to make the ground explode and everything's going to be awesome. And they're free. Yay! So, but he's got a bunch of great tutorials and plugins that are fairly inexpensive. Lens flare. You guys see Star Trek? Did they use lens flare on the new Star Trek? It looked like it. Yeah, I mean, Brian Singer. It's like, I can't see anything. But um, Andrew Kamer's plugins were incorporated. That was done in the lens. Huh? That was done in the lens. The stuff in space? Yeah. They actually took one and threw them the yeah, but I mean like this stuff in space and stuff like that, the CG stuff. That was all practical but how can you do that in space? You weren't in space, Brian. It was a movie. I know, but <laughs> anyway, they look like Andrew Kramer's stuff. Um, his lens fair package is great. Uh, so to answer your question, you don't need to know about 3D stuff. Just become a good artist because After Effects relies on color and shapes and movement and stuff like that. And then you can, it, look, it's all keyframing. You know, just learn keyframing and how layers interact with each other, and that's a big part of it. Do you know Photoshop? The thing that the the epiphany moment for me in, in After Effects. After Effects is Photoshop with layers that move. Yeah, that's it. And it's so much better than Flash. 
anything that you can do in Photoshop as practical layer effects, you can do in After Effects the same way. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh no no no. So don't go to don't go to Red Giant and look at tutorials. Don't go because that they're gonna make you buy stuff. Videocopilot.net mm -hmm. by far and Lynda.com. They both have amazing free tutorials on on both of those things. Yeah. The thing I love about Video Copilot is, is we're going to do this effect, which is a particle system built into After Effects, and we're going to play this, this, and this to make them an awesome lens thing, which is super cool. So yeah, just watch the free stuff. But hey, plugins help. You know what I mean? They're they're great. Trap code. Oh my God, trap code. We had one other question. I think we're going to tear down and go over the thing. What's up? Oh, I'm good. You're good. Anybody else? Yeah, hit me. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not an SEO expert. Brad is more of an SEO expert, so I'm going to hand this in. My general advice with SEO is always just be honest. Look, if you're talking about classic cars, you're not going to say, totally awesome free iPad, give away classic cars. So just the, the I think, how many people went to the SEO stuff throughout the day? It's great stuff. Um, huh? Oh, yeah, Caitlin's amazing. Um, general rule with SEO is be honest. You can do some keyword research, but the people don't like to be tricked. So just once you find your niche, and if you're doing that, then you're going to get some good traffic anyway. But if you tag it with relevant information, you know, uh, it's going to, you can only do so much, you, and then you start to get into like the gray area. So stay squeaky clean, just be honest, do a little bit of research on SEO, and Brad probably has some tips. And Shipple will love me for this. Shipple.com slash SEM hyphen tools is going to... Yeah, all the ship lights are grinning. I love it. No, no, I don't work at Shipple. Um, <laughs> that was on video. Stop it. Um, so that's going to be one of the things that you, when you go when you go and do that. Look at what keywords are performing, and then ask yourself: Am I able to do content that fit that without compromising my message? Because and don't keyword stuff. Don't keyword load. Just like blanket everything, you know, be true to what what you're doing, and but yeah, tagging is a huge thing. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things that you know, it it really gets your video out there way beyond because people are searching, and that's how the search engine works within YouTube is the tag mm -hmm. and the title. Cool. Well, I think we're gonna wrap it up. Uh, we're going to again. We're gonna go across the way. We're gonna have lights and all kinds of great stuff you can burn your hands on. Um, we'll have cameras. Uh, we'll have the TriCaster, we'll have action, um, and that's it. Thank you for your time. We appreciate you being here. You're a great audience. <laughs>